Welcome back to Monster Prom. I need to go. Oh, she's in the library, so I can't go get more money. Well, let's get some of my boldness back since I. Shoot, except I forgot which place gives boldness. Bathrooms. A day you skip class, intending to spend the term in the bathrooms. But you encounter three wild hyenas on the way there. Who the heck runs security here? Anyway, you subdue them with the help of a hair comb. God bless the Monster Scouts and all the idiotic scenarios they've prepared you for. By the time you get to the bathrooms, you've totally gained plus two boldness. In the course of your activities, you come across Vera and Polly hatching yet another scheme. You sneak a little closer so Hi. you drop. Listen, this has been a fruitful partnership so far in terms of making people look like imbeciles, but I think it's time we monetize. Sick burns don't buy fresh outfits. Yeah, yeah, fine, whatever. I guess I could use some new thongs or whatever, but like... I don't want to stop making people look dumb just so we can make money. I don't want to sell out. Personally, I can't wait to sell out, but you have a point. We can't sacrifice our brand. The question, of course, is how we do bo how do we do both? Yeah, how do we get rich off yanking people's chains? Ugh. Careful with your choice of words, Polly. What? Chains are a big thing for ghosts. Of course. They don't seem to have any immediate ideas. Maybe you can offer a solution? Um... I don't think I have enough creativity or smarts or money. I don't know. Oh man, do I have a great prank for you? I call it stealing. Hmm, stealing. I like where your head's at, but it could use a catchier name. No, that's already a thing. Fair point, but we need something classier. Something that says this is cool and also legal. Ooh, theft. Warmer, warmer. Oh, what about finance? Um, that's already a thing. Fine. How about ambush finance? Oh yes, that's hot. You leave them to discuss whether they can trademark stealing. Meanwhile, you gain plus two creativity and plus one boldness. Let's do this! I need to get more money so that I can hit the shop, so that I can get the thing for Vera's ritual thing. You arrive at your chosen table to find Vera looking askance at Miranda's lunch, a single, very suspicious looking apple. Miranda, honey, your apple seems to be pul pulsing with unhealthy purple light. Oh, I'm sure it's just your imagination. Ugh. It also has a skull on it, and it smells like lighter fluid. I don't think it's for eating. Of course it's for eating. It's a perfectly standard poison apple. You know, the sort that puts a princess to sleep for a hundred years? You literally just admitted it's poison. I know, I know, and I always said I wouldn't be the kind of princess who eats a poisoned apple. But how else will I find a prince to wake me with true love's kiss and live happily ever after with me? Girl, we need to have a little talk about feminism. You, back me up on this. Tell her she doesn't need to poison herself for the sake of a man. Um... You don't need to eat that apple. Princes should be eating poisoned apples so that you'll kiss them. A marvelous idea. The princes are asleep. I shall be able to assess them fully before making a selection. Come to think of it, I suppose this is why the princes prefer sleeping damsels to begin with. God, royal marriages. The whole thing is like a meat market. In my kingdom, it's more of a fish market. In any case, you two have truly opened my eyes. I shall be sending poisoned apples to all nearby princes forthwith. Miranda gets to work poisoning all her suitors. Vera is very impressed with your enlightened opinions on gender and poison. Money. Let's do this! Go make money. That day you spent some time on the library's PCs, sending malicious spam emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose 10 karma, which isn't a stat in this game, so who cares, and you gain plus 2 money. You're minding your own business when Vera grabs you by the collar and yanks you into a huddle with her and Polly. We're in big trouble, and it's all your fault. Yeah, Ambush Finance has been a huge success. Too huge. They want us to write a book about it. But we don't know how to write a book. And we already accepted the advance. So I took a bunch of Adderall and wrote 270 pages of garbage about stealing. But of course, the publishing house won't accept it. They say it's missing a big reveal at the end. Some kind of ultimate secret to Ambush Finance success. That's where you come in. Yeah, you came up with the idea in the first place. For which we owe you absolutely no royalties, by the way. 
So we figured you could help us come up with a big secret for the end of the book. What do you say? Keeping in mind that if you say no, I will have you skinned. Um... Ah... Uh... This one. Um, wow. You know, I don't have any organs inside me, right? Classic alive people privilege assuming everybody just has organs. Gross. Well, I personally don't care about your blatant racism at all. It would seriously harm our sales across several demographics, including ghosts, robots, and living furniture. I only endorse discrimination when it's profitable, thank you. Later, ghost hater. Aw, oh, boo. Live minus two charm, minus one smart. Luckily, my boldness and fun are safe, and I got money about it, so... Let's do this! We gotta go to the library again... ...to get some more money. That day, you spend some time in the library's PCs, managing your start kicker. You deceive a lot of people with a sensationalist video and impossible promises. Nice! You gain 10,000 money, but almost everything goes to cover costs, and you only keep two money. Maybe that was a million money. You spot Vera at the computer next to you, deep in contemplation. You offer her a penny for her thoughts. only. Vera Oberlin. My thoughts are worth significantly more than a penny, but I'll invoice you later. I'm trying to launch a new legitimate business venture. I'm sorry, I mean scam. But I'm not sure how to best recruit customers. I'm sorry, I meant to say gullible suckers. I've got no trouble finding victims in real life. My snakes use their tongues to smell weakness. But snakes can't use their tongues on the internet. I know, I was surprised by that as well. So, any ideas? Um... So... This one feels pretty bold, and that's the one thing I'm good at. Interesting. I'm intrigued, but could you show me a design mock-up so that I can make a final decision? You open up MS Paint and enthusiastically create the best ad you know how to make. You show it to Vera with pride. I... See. Is there a reason you chose the brown on brown color scheme? Or where the first half of literally is an entirely different font than the second half? I'm afraid that my accepting this as an advertisement would make me an even bigger sucker than the people I intend to scam. By the way, it's spelled ad, not ag. You knew you were spelling that word wrong. You lose two smarts and one creativity. Well... <laughs> Let's Cat. do this! I need to buy something for a ritual. Give me your money. Blood of the former prom queen. It's only a dollar. I did all that to get extra money and it's a dollar. <laughs> well catch you later. It's fine. Because now, I'm supposed Let's to meet Vera this. at the bathrooms, I think. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. While in the bathroom, you tell yourself in the mirror that you're so bold you would kill a tiny big-eyed turtle with your bare hands. That monstrous, ask, that monstrous act would instantly give you 500 boldness. But come on, you're just talking to yourself in the mirror. What's the merit in that? You know what? You can keep two boldness anyway for saying that to yourself out loud. On closer inspection, you see blood pooling on the floor, and Vera standing over it, smiling broadly, holding the carcass of a skin hey, goat. You. Hey, thanks for coming. The fun's just getting started. I know we only need the goat's tongue, but like, if you're gonna take the tongue from a goat, might as well take the skin too and make yourself a pair of sweet boots. Not that I know how to sew, it would take the time to ever if I did, but Miranda has some mer slaves I can borrow. It's a pretty nice tongue, right? Not too fat, not too thin, the right kind of purple. I think I'll be the most beautiful, regal, feared prom queen ever to grace the spooky high school in no time at all. It's not a bad plan, except the spiders need to relieve themselves too, and it's at that moment that Principal Giant Spider walks in to use the toilet. Oh hey, good afternoon, Principal Giant Spider. I'm just holding this skinned goat on school property because, because... Um... I don't think I have enough smarts for... That feels like it could... Uh... 
I don't know what the best choice is here, this one. Principal Giant Spider gasps. A rival institution? Do you think it was Prixi- Prix Prixi Prap High? We weren't sure, that's why we skinned the goat. We thought maybe it would have the name of the school written in its guts. Smart, good call, good call. And did it? Asks Principal Giant Spider. Um, no, not that we saw. Make sure you check the stomach for a bezoar, because sometimes school names are written there. We will absolutely check and get right back to you on that. Principal Giant Spider exits, shaking his he head and mumbling something about those friggin' fairies. Nailed it! Now we just need to find those earrings and we'll be all set to be prom queen. And by we, I mean me and only me. But at least you'll have helped in her ascent. That's gotta be worth some bonus points with her, right? You gain plus two creativity and plus one boldness. Let's do this! Do you have the earrings? Or will Vera have the earrings? I have money, Show let's go check. Money. Let's buy this mystery gift for zero dollars. Or we could buy a PR agent. No refunds. Ah, nothing better than the smell of money. Well, actually there are many better smells, but you know what I mean, right? Okay. Let's do this! Vera! You find Vera sitting in front of a pile of money instead of food, as usual. Damien comes over and drops his own money pile on the table, and also some organs. Oh, not hmm. bad. Not bad, but I prefer to exert a little less effort for my income. A dejected swamp creature slumps over to the table and adds some money to Vera's pile. Income? You mean this stuff? This is just what people throw at me to get me to stop punching them. And this is what people throw at me to keep me from revealing what kind of porn they're into. But I agree, the money is only secondary. The frowns on their faces are, they only, are their own reward. Still, I'm always looking to improve efficiency. <laughs> Have you tried developing business contacts in hell? Your victims will be even more terrified if they know death won't save them. Yeah, but that doesn't work on the undead. For those, you need a priest. A priest? You know how my family feels about priests. Ugh, I'm sick of terrorizing people one at a time. There's gotta be a better way to terrorize everybody in the cafeteria at once. And make money at the same time. I'm sure there is. That is, after all, the essence of capitalism. Um... This mm, one! Great. Simple, elegant, raunchy, I like your style. But how are you gonna trick a whole room full of people? Don't tell me you don't know how to do that. Is this... is this something you do all the time? Is this something you don't do all the time? I thought you were a prince of hell. <laughs> yeah, but I'm prince of the burning part of hell, not the sexy part of hell. That explains it. Well, to answer your question, this is a room full of high schoolers. A slight breeze could... <laughs> Although the succubus sauce I snuck into the sloppy joes won't hurt either. It certainly doesn't. You, Vera, and Damien retreat to a safe distance to film the sexy carnage and avoid the fluids. Let's do this! Outdoors. That day during races, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You spot Juan, the small magical Latino cat who seems a bit sad. He explained to you he, he explains to you that he's worried people are so used to calling him Juan, the small magical Latino cat, that now everyone defines him only by his size, magicality, ethnicity, and species. He's more than that. You correct him, you don't see him in such simplistic terms and convenient definitions. It's just that there are around 23 other different Juans in the school, so adding all that to his name is quite necessary. You tell him you'll never forget about him and the crazy adventures you both lived together in Monster Prom's sequel, I mean Monster Prom's prequel, Monster Middle School. You have a great time remembering those crazy stories, you gain plus two fun. Vera runs up to you, eyes blazing, teeth gleaming. Uh. You will never even believe this. Remember how the coven said we'd never find the earrings? It's because they had them the whole time! We're summoning them and taking those earrings at any cost, even if it's the last thing you do. Um, did Vera just imply that she was willing to let you die in order to become prom queen? Irrelevant, because 
irrelevant because the coven has been summoned. Nice try. So you figured it out. Good for you. Now give up because you're never getting them. Ha! That's what Miranda said about the sea opal ring her dead grandmother gave her. But look what I'm wearing right now. How do any of you have friends? It's baffling. You're horrible, horrible people. I mean, they're not wrong, but there must be some way to get them to fork over the earrings so you can complete the ritual. Um... No, no, Coven, you misunderstood. We're trying to save the world, too! You... you are? Uh-oh, I don't have enough charm. Of course we are. Did you really think I only cared about fashion and finance and showing dominance over my fellow students? It's been a cover this entire time! I've really been using all my free time not to trick people out of their money and complicated business schemes while looking incredible. I've been... saving orphans from interdimensional monsters because... I like doing altruistic things? Perfect! Come with us right now, we could use your help! It'll be a dangerous mission, there's no guarantee that any of us will survive, but now that we know how devoted you are... The coven starts to drag Vera away, but she wrenches herself from their gasp. Stop, stop, stop! I was lying, okay, good lord, no way am I risking my life for you losers! Nice job, Emmy. I thought I'm, I might die to be prom queen, but probably not. But I'm definitely not going to die doing something lame like trying to save the world. Aw, oh, heck. Sending Vera off to get killed probably did not endear you to her. Loser. You lose two fun and one boldness. Dang it! Monster prom's here. Hey, did you. I succeed? Let's do this! Did I finally succeed? You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you! You're asking me to go to the prom with you? Have you seen yourself in a mirror? Dang it! <laughs> your face is a crime against humanity, and not one of the crimes against humanity I enjoy perpetrating. Bye, Bye loser. <laughs> Pathetic. This failure haunted you the rest of your life and you never moved on, becoming a total and constant failure. You never succeeded at anything again. Dang it! Except for that time you went at Monsters Got Talent, but your talent was being a failure at love. It astonished everyone how bad you were at romance. Not any less sad, though. <laughs> I'm most likely to be tasting if e tasty if eaten by other people. That's good. Yep. Vera kept being fierce, strong, and stunning. Some haters once said adult life would put that mean... But you know what? Vera ended up making adult... <laughs> okay. Well, I still have yet to succeed at something. I'm gonna try again, I guess. But in the next episode, bye-bye.